Clemson, Miami, Florida State, take your pick. Welcome to the Voice of College Football and our series all-time program rankings. Check out the introductory video. We lay out our 10-step process and our 10 criteria that we're measuring all the programs nationwide. Leave your comments below, of course. Check out the Pac-12 and the Big 12 videos we've posted. Now we're on to what I consider to be the most intriguing conference to evaluate all time, the ACC. Because the Big 12, think about it. Two programs have dominated and one's taken over here in the last 10 to 15 years. In the Pac-12, it's one dominant program by far. In the ACC, though, once you add up all the numbers, who's going to come out the best? Because the conference was formed in 1953. So all these schools were playing football for decades before 1953. Clemson's been the best program top to bottom since the start of the conference in 53, but they have not been an elite program most of that time. They've been a top 15 to 30 program. But of course, Dabo Sweeney has elevated things considerably. Florida State's been the most consistent winner by far of any school uh, that we're going to evaluate. Um, they joined the league in 92. Uh, Bobby Bowden took over in 76 and got the program up and running. And Florida State was elite forever up until a few years ago. Jimbo Fisher won a national championship most recently for this conference in 2013. And then there's Miami, which has been great or mediocre. <laughs> there's really been no in between with Miami from the early 80s to the early 2000s. Miami, arguably the best program in college football. Outside of that, mediocrity. Not good, irrelevant on the field. And that's been a long time now. So how's it all add up? Well, let's first check out the ACC in regards to when these teams joined the conference. Back in 1953, the conference was formed with Clemson, Duke, Maryland, North Carolina, North Carolina State, South Carolina, and Virginia. So six of those schools still in the ACC some 70 years later. In 1978, Georgia Tech jumped on board. 2004, monumental when Miami and Virginia Tech moved in from the Big East. And we got to step back to 1992, of course, Florida State. They joined the ACC and just took over, didn't lose. Took forever for them to lose a game to Virginia, and they just dominated the conference. Uh, 2005, BC, 2011, Pitt and Syracuse joined, and then Louisville in 2012. All right. Most important criteria for me is winning percentage because it can't be altered or manipulated. It's just flat out. Did you win the games on the field and at what percentage is even more valuable than looking at all time wins because these programs started at different times. What's the winning percentage? Well, it's Florida state number one by a considerable margin, followed by Miami second and Clemson third, Virginia tech, the only other school above 60% winning percentage. And it's going to surprise some people that Georgia Tech fares well through most of these criteria. Georgia Tech with a dominant program in past generations. The Yellow Jackets at 583 winning percentage. Two losing programs in the history of the conference. Duke at 488, just below 500. And Wake Forest. This really underlines how good they've been just in the last few years in bucking the trends of history. Wake Forest barely wins 40% of its games in the history of the ACC. Associated press rankings. Are these flawed? Of course they are. That's why I've got a top 25 that actually makes sense released every Sunday during the season because the AP rankings, let's be kind, they're flawed. Okay, let's be kind, they're flawed. But they are meaningful and a strong indicator, of course. A team's not going to finish fifth in the country after a 13-game season unless they're somewhere around number five in the country. So they are a strong indicator, and the AP has put together a rankings point system that goes back to the inception of the rankings in 1936. Florida State's number one there. Miami's two. Kind of surprised me there. Clemson at three. And again, Georgia Tech at number four. Pitt ranks high. Way down at the bottom, we will see this as a trend. Wake Forest and Virginia. On to major bowl wins. So we separated bowl wins versus major bowl wins. Uh, defeating a top team from the Big Ten or the SEC in a major bowl game should be given more credit than defeating you know, a top 50 team in the Independence Bowl. 
Is it a perfect ranking system again? No. You can have really good teams show up at the Citrus Bowl or the Outback Bowl or the Holiday Bowl, and then you can have lesser teams, let's say from the group of five, show up in a New Year's Six Bowl game. But by and large, 90-some percent of the time, the tougher teams and the better games are played in the major bowl game. So we separated giving more points to the major bowl wins. Florida State, number one here with 13. Georgia Tech ties Clemson and Miami in second place with 10. North Carolina has yet to win a major bowl game. That's kind of surprising. But uh, Mac Brown, of course, did a fine job his first stint at North Carolina. And they've had a decent football program most of the time. They last played in a major bowl game, losing to Texas A&M in 2020. North Carolina State has yet to win a major bowl game. Same thing with Wake Forest. Now on to just bowl victories. Add it all together. Bowl wins Florida State again with 15 added to the 13 major wins. Comes out with 28 bowl wins. Clemson at 26. Miami, well... (laughs) They've really not won any bowl games since 2004. Uh, Mark Richt and company won the 2016 uh, bowl game in Florida, Orlando against uh, West Virginia. But other than that, my goodness, Miami has been a bad, bad bowl um, participant here recently. Uh, But, of course, their great success for a 20-year period keeps them in the top three or four there. Duke's only won four bowl games in its history. Virginia with eight now let's look at conference championships. And again, this is going to be flawed because you got Florida State as an independent for a long time. Miami, the same history generally. Uh, Miami joined a conference before Florida State. Florida State joined the ACC in 92, just a couple of years after Miami, of course, joining the Big East. So these are total conference championships. Again, we would have to go through and differentiate everything uh, because these Teams all belong to a different conference prior to the ACC's beginning in 1953. All right, Clemson with 26 ACC championships. And, of course, they went on a six-year run here recently between 2015 and 20. Duke has surprisingly won 17 ACC championships, so they rank rather high. Their latest ACC championship was in 1989 under Steve Spurrier. They've been blanked since then. Pitt, of course, coming in with three conference championships in the ACC or total championships, but they were, of course, an independent, then in the Big East with a couple championships and one ACC championship in 2021. This past season, Florida State, by far the most impressive run. So if we did percentage of conference championships, Florida State would, they would top out higher than anyone. They've got 15 ACC championships since 1992. So that's 92 to 21 That's roughly 29 football seasons, maybe 30 football seasons, and Florida State has won half of the ACC championships. It's pretty incredible. On to national championships. Miami with five, and these are adjusted national championships. Check out the initial video to get the explanation. Clemson with three, Florida State with three. Pitt last won a national championship in 1976 with Tony Dorsett and company. They've got four total And uh, seven schools in the ACC out of 14 have zero national championships. On to the NFL draft, where again, you're going to see the big three dominate here. Miami takes the lead in terms of NFL draft selections over Florida State and Clemson. How about the number two school, though? Could be a surprise to many here. Pitt jumps in at number two all-time in NFL draft selections. North Carolina has been strong, of course, since the 1980s. Virginia Tech under Frank Beamer. I counted up 111 of the 157 selected in the NFL draft for Virginia Tech came under the leadership of Frank Beamer. All right, first round selections in the NFL and Miami takes over even more when you go to the cream of the crop in first round selections, 67 to 45 over Florida State. Clemson comes in with 37. There you see North Carolina, Pitt and Syracuse all with 20 plus first round selections in the NFL draft. All-Americans, Florida State over Miami, 45 to 36. Pitt comes in with 54 to lead everyone. Clemson with 31. And so, again, the big three pretty much remain the big three throughout most of these criteria, although Pitt jumping up with NFL draft selections and All-Americas. Also, Heisman trophies. 
Miami and Florida State have won five of these together since 1986. Clemson has yet to win a Heisman Trophy. And the rest of the conference comes in with four Heisman Trophies. Lamar Jackson, the last ACC winner in 2016. Then we go through the major awards. I'm not going to list them here. We do that in the introductory video. But I went through all the major position awards. Florida State leads Miami 15 to 12. This is kind of a low figure when comparing to the other powerhouses across college football. 15 to 12, Florida State. Pitt and BC at nine. Georgia Tech and Clemson with five. And many of the other teams did not fare well in terms of gathering major hardware in the offseason. All right, that's the ACC. My spin on it is basically that Florida State, they joined in 92. They've been by far the best program in the conference since they've joined. If we look at the point system here, we will see that Florida State comes out on top over Miami by about 100 plus points. Clemson at number three. You see some other schools ranking in there with uh, Georgia Tech and Pitt. Not surprisingly at four and five. And then a bunch of schools in that mid-tier, including Louisville, Boston College, and others. Uh, an overall theme here is, of course, that Virginia and Wake Forest have been lowly, lowly programs in the ACC for a long, long time as charter members back in 1953. Our look at the ACC, the numbers tell us Florida State's number one, and I think it's clear that since joining in 92, Florida State's been number one out of the charter members. It's Clemson. Most of Miami's numbers, of course, accumulated outside in terms of championships and high winning percentage outside of the ACC since joining in 2004. Check out the Big 12 and check out our Pac-12 video right here at the Voice of College Football. Best discussion, debate, and analysis. Subscribe. Hit that bell for the notifications to know when we go live.